Hello and thanks for joining us. Today, the female nude. It dates back to the very beginning of art, but it remains a contested symbol. My guest, the American photographer René Jacobs, is reclaiming it. Jacobs, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Now, you described your work as a form of queer and feminist activism. What kind of image of women do you want the world to see? I want the world to see women as they want to be seen. So I have ideas about women and sexuality, but every woman I photograph has her own vision of herself, of her place in the world, of her sexuality. And I, I want to hear what these women have to say. So it's a real collaborative process. Well, to give people some background about you, you're from Pennsylvania, and your first photo book was about a huge man-made mine disaster there that was published in 1986, Slow Burn, a photo document of Centralia, Pennsylvania. Since then, your work has been featured in Vanity Fair, Elle, the British Journal of Photography and ID magazine. Um, you also spent 15 years as a civil rights lawyer and filed some of the earliest gay rights cases in the US um, in the 90s. Now, you also have two photo books coming out this year. One is called Paris. Um, it's a re-edition of your sold-out 2013 book. The other is called Polaroid. It was awarded the 2022 International Photography Award for Fine Art Book. Congratulations for that. Thank now, you. Um, let's talk about the book Paris, though. Uh, you've said the city really does something to women. What did you mean by that? Well, I've had, like so many American girls and women, I've had this fascination with Paris from the time I was very small. And I many years ago saw the uh, documentary uh, Paris Was a Woman and the book that came with that. And I was transfixed by the power and the beauty that all of these women in Paris had and were exercising and enjoying in the 1920s and 30s. And I was transfixed by it. So Paris has become this beacon of freedom for me for a very long time. And you moved to southwestern France um, from Los Angeles with your wife in 2016. Tell us about that choice. Oh, it was wonderful. It, it was an amazing change to go from Los Angeles to France. People thought that I might move to Paris because of the book. And I thought about it, but I've become much more of a, a nature girl versus a city girl. And the way it happened, we wanted to be somewhere warmer, so we thought the south. We went into the tourism office in Montpellier and said, where is the most magnificent nature within an hour of you? And they pointed basically to where we live now. And that's how you decided. That's, yeah. Wow. Well, you also have an exhibition in Paris. It's called Dreams and Desires. It's at Sinner. Um, let's hear from some of the people at the opening. She has an amazing way to collaborate with her subjects and it is really living their fantasy and that is very empowering. We have seen so much of the male gaze on the female body. It is so much time for the female gaze on the female body. I think Renee's work is incredible. She's the lesbian helmet muting. Um, there are very few lesbian photographers in the world and of the few that there are, Renee's definitely at the top of her game. Um, the lesbian Helmut Newton. Um, <laughs> now, we're hearing a lot about these days about the male and female gaze. Um, some might say that the female gaze doesn't sexualize women. What do you think? I think that's a shame. Why shouldn't we be sexualized if that's what we want? I think, again, it's all up to the individual woman in the image. And I've, I've said this quite a bit. I've done a lot of thinking on it. I think, really, these terms need to be retired. The male gaze, the female gaze. I personally would replace them with the empowering gaze and the disempowering gaze. And I think all photographers are capable of both. And I, I think we should empower the empowering gaze. I, I think it's time to retire the other, the other terms. And the notion of pleasure seems to be at the center of your work. Over the years, you've been told to tone down the sexuality and eroticism in your work. Um, why, in 2022, is female sexuality still so taboo? Well, it's very threatening because when women are given a voice, 
when women take their own voice, that really is something that is still dangerous to a lot of people. Uh, the legendary feminist photographer Donna Ferrato uh, described some of my work as being very dangerous because it shows unscripted desire. And I think that gets to something that's very important. If women are allowed to just explore what they want to explore, the guardrails come off and people find that very dangerous. And these days, many photographers um, show their work, share their work with their audience on social networks. That must be quite complicated for you because they have very strict rules about nudity, don't they? What are the challenges with that? Well, I, I've become very uh, adept at using black boxes on a lot, of, a lot of different parts of women. And even then, sometimes I, I still get uh, my work taken down. I, it's a difficult thing. As a former lawyer, I understand that uh, these social media networks have rules. They're allowed to have rules. And I certainly try and abide by them, even if I don't agree with them. The problem comes when they're arbitrarily applied. And that's exactly where we are with social media right now. I want to talk about one um, photo of yours in particular. It's mm -hmm. called Tiana's Hair. It's on um, show at your exhibition here in Paris. Talk to us mm -hmm. about this image. Yeah, Tiana's hair was one of the first nudes, even though it's not exactly a nude, uh, but it's one of the first images I took of a woman where I thought I was really translating my beliefs about the power of women, the mystery of women. We, we, we're not allowed to access that. We don't even know how to access that. And this was an image from 2007, and it was about the first time that I really started to understand how to visualize these ideas of pleasure and desire that are really at the periphery of what we're told we're allowed to access in ourselves. And I wanted to ask you um, about another artist from Pennsylvania who's being celebrated in Paris at the moment at the Pompidou Center. Alice Neal was a feminist icon of the 20th century, subverting art history's male gaze with her daringly confrontational intimate portraits. Um, do you know her work? Of course, of course, another fellow Philadelphian. And um, what do you think of it? Oh, I love it. I love it. And I love that she's getting her due again. I mean, she had waves of popularity. And to see some of the shows that are happening right now celebrating her work, it's, it's marvelous. It's wonderful. Okay, well, let's find out um, some more about the exhibition on the American painter Alice Neal at the Pompidou Center. Figures coaxed out of the shadows and onto the canvas, brushstroke by brushstroke. From the invisible black man, to the scorned single mother, to the tuberculosis patient. Alice Neal spent her life painting the working class New York neighborhoods around her, especially Greenwich Village and Spanish Harlem, where she lived for years. The resulting work is an intimate reflection of 20th century America. For her whole life, Alice Neal took the side of those on the margins of society, the victims of inequality. She was against all social and racial discrimination. She defended gay rights. These battles that she led all her life are shown in this exhibition. Among these causes, the fight for gender equality. Alice Neal dared to paint men's naked bodies in a way that mocked perceived notions of male virility as she became a pioneer of the female gaze. Her portraits of naked women are just as striking, both uncompromising and full of empathy. As can be seen in this painting, Marxist Girl. In the subject's posture and in the detail of her body hair, Today it's become more fashionable, but at the time, in Puritan American society, it was not the done thing. It shows the audacity of these feminist artists who went beyond the male gaze, beyond all the beauty codes imposed on women. She described herself as a collector of souls, Alice Neal's recognition came late in life, the result of being an American woman and a communist, as well as her choice to stick to intimate portraits at a time when abstract artists like Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko dominated the scene. So I'm here in the studio with Rennie Jacobs. Um, now, Alice Neal painted 
male and female nudes. I wanted to ask you, what do you make of her depiction of the female body? It's marvellous. It's marvellous. And you can feel, as the report said, the, the empathy. And these were friends. These were people in her life. And to have that kind of connection where a woman shares with you who she is is marvellous. And there should be more of that in art. Art should be all about that. I wanted to ask you, actually, who are your models? Where do you find them? <laughs> I am very lucky that way. They, they find me, for the most part. Um, friends talk to friends. Other friends talk to friends. Friends tell me they want to be photographed with certain friends. Um, I obviously have photographed my, my wonderful wife. And so it's just a community that keeps on growing, which is really marvellous. Um, just before we go, we always end our show with our guest's cultural pick of the moment. And um, what have you chosen? I've chosen Barbara Forstner, who is the lead singer for a group called Eggs. And they have a concert coming up on November 24th in Nice. And Barbara is the daughter of Gregory Forstner, French painter, wonderful man, wrote the introduction for my Polaroids book, who wrote that desire needs context. And he and she are what happens when powerful men enable powerful women. His daughter is marvelous, joyful, and it's all the things that you would want a man teaching his children, his daughter, about what it is to be in the world. Okay, well, we're going to play out with eggs, and um, this is called Tired of Our Love. Rene Jacobs, thank you so much for your company. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to have you. Your books are called Paris and Polaroids. Your exhibition Dreams and Desires is on at Cine in Paris. Your work is also on display at Barcelona's Erotic Museum until April. Thanks for your company. See you next time. I'm so much more than I let you see. No, you too well, no, you can complete me. But there was something missing in your eyes. I used to dream of us running side by side I miss dreaming of falling in love A stranger's eyes could fall into mine I know cause I've seen them before <laughs> Pakistan is one of the countries most impacted by global warming. After the heat wave last May, torrential rains hit the country. Natural disasters that are exacerbating Pakistan's rampant poverty and spreading the risk of disease. Pakistan produces less than 1% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, but is among the hardest hit by natural disasters linked to climate change. Unable to cope, Pakistan's authorities demand rich countries pay for the loss and damage they have caused. While the COP27 takes place in Egypt, discussions will address the critical point of loss and damage. Don't miss our latest edition of Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.